Just like a spark that's breaking out Can't make a start, can't turn back now You know that there's no room for doubt No, we can't turn back now
Good afternoon and good evening. Happy Friday, everyone. <coughs> oh, pardon me. Welcome to this production of DCG Elysium vs. Orange Sprouts. I am Morpheus, and thank God that cat is off the board. I am joined by Silent... Oh, and the ash is gone. How are you doing today, mate? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. Happy Friday. Ready for the weekend. Uh, ADC is being hit hard right now on both sides, and the Viega... These are these quick map for picking bands are coming in. Real quick fire. I think the bigger one that, no surprise, is the fact that Yumi is off the board. This champion is just stupidly strong in this current patch and is extremely easy to pilot for both teams. Well, especially considering that uh, Orange Sprouts' support is mainly an enchanter. <clears throat> well, the nice thing is is that taking that off the table allows Zimfani to play things he loves to play, like a Nautilus's, like a Leona's. He loves playing his uh, tank engaged support, so I'm surprised that Orange Sprouts haven't really put much attention to there per se final band we're waiting in from orange sprouts to come through literally been taken off by elysium good pickup because o minus uh i hope i pronounced that correctly uh is a fan of the champion as well but also the champion can be flexed the top lane so spread them cheeks you're coming in for some stuff today mate i uh, will also be denied that pick talia being the final um champion banned by orange sprouts as the wukong no surprises locked in for elysium yeah, it's a great flex, and looks like the bands are coming even quicker with the Swain being picked. Um, which Where do you think it's going to go? Support or mid? Or even ADC? S Swain mid is what we've seen more so in the pro scene. Um, although it has a, I think it's like a 58% win rate in the bot lane. Um, can easily be flexed, along with the Trundle uh, being hovered right now as well. Trundle, again, can obviously go, never mind, we got the volley, so we know that's the solid jungle going into what is most likely the Wukong uh, against Elysium. The Swain is a being picked so early is not something I'm a fan of, although I think the champion itself is very strong. Because you will be pushed into a corner of saying, hey, we are going to have to try and keep this guy alive because as beefy as this guy might get, he's not as tanky as he thinks. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting because with the Wukong, the kind of needs to have that engage. So if everyone is unable to disengage, Swain definitely benefits from that. And as we get the orange, so we kind of figure out where Wukong is already going. Yeah, Orange will be heading up into the top lane. Wukong will go into the jungle. Seraphine being locked in here. Now, here's the thing. It, Senna is off the board, so I would assume that this may actually be a mid lane Seraphine for Lovable. Uh, generally, in pro play as a whole, has a pretty good win rate there as well. And we do see a fair amount of solo queue. Has actually the highest win rate in the 80, well, a E carry role in the bot lane there. So this may tell me that, hey, they made this might be the answer Elysium has for the Swain and just trying to match wherever this champion ends up going. Yeah, at the moment we're looking at two teams that it seems like they're able to flex a lot. Um, well, we definitely know that Nami is definitely going in the support role, so no no flex there. Nami's uh, an interesting pick, because generally you don't pick Nami, pardon me, without the Lucian. So seeing this makes me more inclined to think that if Elysium, they may be forcing Elysium to say, hey, ban the Lucian, because if they ban it, you're almost forcing the Swain to go bot lane, because... There's not much else that Nami can potentially work with uh, on the bot side. People think that it does go well with the Tristana because of the Hail of Blaze and you are able to proc off the Electrocute there as well. Not as effective as it is on the Lucian as we see the Aurelia taken off the board. I think they are going to force Elysium to ban the Lucian, which may push the Swain to go into the bot lane though. Um, historically, they actually have already played the Nami with a Ezreal as well as an MF. So it's actually, it might just be their most comfort after that Yumi getting banned as an Enchanter. So I think this might just be a comfort thing, not necessarily a Lucian Nami. I think they heard you because the MF is now off the board. So <laughs> <laughs> do you ban the Lucian and, or the Ezreal and force, them, and force them to pick something else? Are you forcing them? To pick the Lucian. I don't know if after that booty, eh? boy, you're in for one today as well. Um, can play uh, the Lucian on their part as well, as the bands have slowed down a wee bit with the Ari being taken away from Lovable. So Sprouts thinks that this Seraphine is going into the bot, one of the bot lane roles. I would think that um, it, Lucian MF would be a great bands because at the moment. It does not look like Orange Sprouts has a lot of consistent damage. Yes, the Swain is there, but he takes a little bit to ramp up. At the moment, they don't really have that early damage, so it w a Volley Bear's ganks would be ineffective. We're waiting for the last second for the band to come out. Okay, Lucian coming through. So the Ezra might actually come in here for uh, Orange Sprouts. As you mentioned, it's probably comfortable for... I'm just going to call you Booty, mate, because... 
that's a, after that booty, no pun intended, is a bit of a mouthful, depending on which way you swing. Um, be ready for those. There's a few of those coming in today, guys. Uh, Fjord being hovered, being locked in for them cheeks. So we're still keeping this Swain Flex alive, keeping Elysium on their toes. Uh, Fiora into Orm. If Fiora get, once Orm gets the Bramble Vest, that really makes Fiora very, it makes it difficult for her to be able to fight into because that anti heal does so much against her. Yeah, at the moment it's gonna be down to what the remaining two picks are. I think for Elysium to see if they can fight this because I I do think that so far Orin has Ooh. the advantage over Fiora. I mean we're looking at Silas, uh, so it looks like Seraphine's most likely gonna be put to support. Yeah, I agree. Silas got a few good ultis to steal from the volleyball ulti is really nice. The Swain R is also really good as well because Silas just continues to just heal and can heal off everything. It's interesting to see that the AD carries have been left for final pick here for Hello and potentially Ude. But we'll see what comes in for Elysium here first. I feel like I should have been expecting the picks by now because of how quick pick and bound already went through. Oh. So get a, give us one moment. We are just getting confirmation of what that final pick is is for Elysium, Zaya. it is Zaya coming through, uh, which is good because it allows her to be able to have some sort of survivability by herself, along with Seraphine being able to keep her alive. Ooh, <laughs> little man coming in! Let's go! Now, we still don't know where these guys are going. Go ahead, what do you think? So, I'm thinking that the Vigar is going to be mid um, Swain ADC just because of that consistent damage. But, I mean, at the same time, Vigar could also go AD. Um, simply, Swain will be able to ramp up safely with from Silas. But I I feel like, I don't know, it could go either way. Vigar, I think, is actually, in this case, I think, actually better in bot lane because of the Seraphine. I think the Seraphine will be able to poke. And you don't really like that as a Swain, especially with how squishy you are in the early game. Whereas the with the Silas, you could just cage him and just walk away once he starts eating toward you aggressively. Um, I think mid lane is going to be really dependent on if Lovable's able to get a lead, because I think he has the toughest lane out of the all th all three lanes, or he four if you include jungle. Yeah, because ICG should just be, once it gets that Bramble Vest, should be able to just sit back on the own. Angry Present is something that I'm really looking forward to, because in the past games, we saw Angry just being able to just run around the rap and impact multiple lanes. Um, but I do think that this Vagar kind of has to go mid, as you said, to stop the Swain coming in and harassing, because once you throw the cage up, there's nowhere really for uh, Silas to really go. Swain going bot lane. Now, they have the double heal down there, but Zaya is able to farm at a distance, and Seraphine can provide as much safety and security uh, as needed there as well. Also, with the, as far as you consider gank setups go, if uh, Oathkeeper ends up going Predator into Vega, which did get heavily hit uh, as of this patch, it would make it a little bit more difficult for gank setup there. My thought is that O- minus may be focusing more to the bot lane. I, honestly, I think that he kind of has an option of all three lanes simply because he's playing Bala Bear. I, I feel like it's going to be harder for Wukong uh, to kind of synergize with the remaining members other than mid lane because Silas wants to go in. So Wukong wants to go in. But with Orn, Orn kind of wants to sit in the back and he doesn't really provide that consistent damage. So Wukong might be on his own for a little bit unless Orn is able to pull off his three abilities in a, a successive combo into that Fiora, and then that Fiora is a very dangerous place to gank top lane. I think you really want that Orn to be left alone on an island, um, and depending on where that Vigar is, you want to avoid that part because you'll you'll take that everyone that is stuck in that cage, whereas the Swain, I think, is the one that you want to pick on. So whatever lane that Swain happens to find himself in is where you want to pick, and it looks like it's going bot lane. Yeah, th thinking that the Vega going into the Silas may have been a little easy matchup because if a Silas ends up going into a Swain, both have sustain, but my thought is that Silas can do more damage, so will out sustain the sustain of Swain. That's a mouthful. <laughs> um, <laughs> going into the longer team fights if they are 1v1 mid lane. Um, <clears throat> but saying that, uh, I do want to kind of just throw it out there. Which side do you feel like has the more potency to get an early need and potentially just snowball the game? So I think Elysium has an easier time with snowballing and getting that early lead simply because they want to win gauge. They have a very um very a team a team that wants to engage and really like um 
have a little scuffles here and there. Whereas the other teams with the Swain, with the Vigard, they kind of want to scale up and exist. Where although Elysium's Orn does provide a little scaling, I think the Vigar and the Swain with their stacks are a little bit more heavy on the stacking. So if you can interrupt that early, then that puts them even further into late game. And right now, I feel like stacking champs, especially at Vigar, is a little bit more difficult to play in comparison to a Silas or a Seraphine if if either of them had gone mid instead of the Silas. So I think it's an interesting situation, but I think if Elysium can get that early lead, it's it should be a done deal. But at the same time, if Orange Sprouts can kind of hold off and kind of scale up and play that long game, I think they have the advantage there. I think the split side is, <clears throat> the longer this game goes, it, it, both sides would actually benefit pretty darn well, but I feel like it gets better for Orange Sprouts, because even though you have the ornaments that may come through for the side of Elysium, you have a Swain, a Vagar, and a Fiora. Vagar and Fiora in particular scale really, really well. The problem I have with Fiora is that if she's put behind early, she takes forever and an age to be an effective champion. But if she is able to get a gank early from O- onto ICGE and then getting somewhat of a lead, Fiora then has a chance to take over, just straight up take over the game. So with that, we're going to quickly jump over to a Spectre to delay about two and a bit minutes. Don't join, don't go too far. Grab yourself a nice cup of tea or a glass of wine if you are ready for the weekend to join us as we see game one of e uh, DCG Elysium going up against Orange Sprouts.
Welcome back everyone to DZG versus Orange Sprouts. ICGE, where is your item, bro? Or did he just decide to start with pots and say that's more than I need to beat this for Yora? Which I really hope is not the case. Welcome everyone to Friday's cast as we see five points on both sides. Electrocute seems to be the name of the game uh, for the bot lane of Orange Sprouts. I don't think ICGE has realized that he's not picked up any items. Unless you're telling me that this is a new strike with Orn. So it is one of the strats with Orn, since Orn is able to buy items in lane as long as they have the gold. So it's going to be interesting to see if he's going to go for that early cloth armor, or whether you know he's going to go with the typical ruby crystal at the start of the game to force out the Bami's uh, the Bami Cinder. Um, in, it is interesting to see that um, Orange Sprouts is offering so many for the domination tree, <laughs> two electrocutes. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how Nami plans to proc it without continuously autoing, since, you know... Well, I guess you could offer it with the Swain E, Q, and then and hopefully an auto. Um, so we're looking at a You'd lot of... you have to land the whole thing, yeah. no? Yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see if that electric is going to be proc <laughs> for Nami. At least I know Swain will most likely be able to, so double electric you. It's going to be interesting yeah. to play. No, you're fully right. As we see both junglers starting on the bot side, um, both top laners are kind of hiding to make it look as if the junglers are starting on the bot side. As Lovable is, I love this about Lovable, not afraid to just move forward. It's like, hi, let me touch you before I end up backing up in lane. Top lane, I expect this to just be a boar fest. Uh, I, I expect them cheeks to attempt to spread ICGEs, but not really quite get much anywhere. Uh, because the Orn should be just be able to just stay back and uh, farm by himself. As Lovable ends up going in on Oathkeep, but Oathkeep level 1 Vagar is honestly terrible. So this is a, overall a good trade for Lovable, but ends up eating a ton of minion damage as the top lane just looks like almost like a wet noodle fight. Uh, as we see bot lane also just hitting level 2 first, walking in forward, and Valenlia gets rooted up. Hello is moving forward here. The pull from after that booty doesn't quite do much, but good trade in for, disease, uh, for Elysium. Yeah, especially with the Symphonic pushing him off the wave, so Swain definitely can't continue CSing. Um, it's going to be interesting to see if mid lane can kind of keep the both mid lane and bot lane to keep the waves kind of more on their side than where they want to be. Because you don't really want to be frozen out so far with a Volibear potentially ganking, but luckily Volibear is looking at top lane. Yeah, I would imagine this is where O minus is really going to be sitting, purely because the bot lane has, oh, speaking of, O minus shows, ICG sees it and says, you know what, I'm a walk away as the root comes in from Symphonic. Hello? Gets a fair bit of damage off as well. This bot lane, as much healing as they're meant to have, is having a little bit of trouble sustaining against Hello and Symphonic as O minus is coming towards mid cage misses from Oathkeeper as well. Yeah, we see that exhaust and ignite chosen by their their bot lane. So obviously they're not going to have that healed. So it's only going to be Swain's W if he ever lands it, as well as Nami's W. So it's heavily on some mana intensive items. So at the moment we're going to be seeing a lot of trading, hopefully in favor of Elysium, um, with the way that the scaling from Vigar and Swain will be in the late game. Yeah, um, it's interesting to see how slow the game has started. This is probably a good thing for um, Orange Sprouts because you don't really want to be fighting a lot knowing that the Swain is fairly squishy early. Even though his Electric is lovable, ends up tapping Oathkeeper some more, is able to dash out of the cage. Oathkeeper has very little mana left. Um, o minus is also following the bot size. It just looks like what's going to be just a full clear and then potentially back here as well. I would like to see O-minus come bot because I do agree in that it's just probably the best place for them to be able to get a gank set up. But the amount of poke that's coming up from Symphonic and Hello is going to be a lot to deal with. Yeah, it's going to take a lot of um, synergy for both junglers to kind of get a successful gank off simply because warding is definitely a key in this game. Yeah, so that's where it goes. We see a little bit of vision in the bot side jungle. Lovable ends up going in on Oathkeeper. Oathkeeper has no man. It's in real trouble here, the Lovable. Showing great restraint to not potentially want to dive under the tower. Uh, assuming that the um, a lot of the damage that they had was still fairly low. So you've got a pause coming in here as well. The jungler for Orange Sprouts unfor had unfortunately disconnected. So once we get connect, once we get young O minus back here, we can continue with our lovely puns of the day. Um, good start overall for both sides, though. In particular, if you are side of Orange Sprouts, you haven't lost anything yet. Yeah, especially with the Orange Sprouts <clears throat> wanting to scale, it's not so bad that they're roughly about 2 to 4 CS in both scaling lanes. 
Um, obviously, the biggest difference is top lane, where Fiora is successfully at about 15 CS more. But I think that might be mainly due to the fact that Volibear showed up and forced Orin to back off the wave, which unfortunately was more in favor of um, DZG's push into the turret. So that meant that he lost a lot of the wave that he could have gained. Um, but luckily, both junglers are roughly around the same CS as well. Mm -hmm. So not really much has been lost on the side of Elysium. Um, one thing I do want to throw out there is we see Hello's taken Lethal Tempo. Now, there's been this whole debate of is Lethality's Eye still good? Should you be going crit now? Do you go Gale Force? Do you go Kraken? Where do you think Hello is going to end up going with this? Because Lethal tells me you're going to go down the crit route. I feel like with the type of champs that you see on the other side, I feel like I'm looking at a shield bow. <laughs> Just out of safety <laughs> or safety, because if you're stuck in that cage, maybe that shield bow might offer you a little bit of protection. Or even if you eat one of um, Swain's claws, Hopefully it'll just help out, but um, <laughs> it will be interesting to see since right now we're looking at both top lane and support with zero wards for Orange Sprouts, so that means that neither of them have put down any wards so far, so we'll see if once Wukong feels confident if he's able to gank either lane successfully and kind of punish the fact that they're not warding. I think once uh, the Orn hits 6, it would be a lot easier to be able to get upon this Fiora because she only has the one repost. So if you have the knock, double knockups potentially coming through from Angry President, the knockup coming from ICG, the slow coming in from the Ornhorn starting, you do have a potential lot of gank setup once you hit six. Um, obviously, Fiora has a very good chance of being able to turn around fights. It's just the nature of her kit. But if she does fall behind, like we said, it will make her very difficult to really participate in these in these fights tp tells us that hey she's going to be going to some form of team fighting uh with the rest of orange i do want to have a look at bot lane that is because hello and symphonic have really tried to be pushing in uh booty and valalia quite a lot it hasn't surmounted in much of a um difference as far as cs goes yet but i do imagine that they're going to want to try and keep them under their tower though yeah, I think it's a great strategy um, to keep him under a turret because Swain definitely has a difficult time trying to CS because if he happens to use his Q, he's affecting multiple minions unless he can perfectly position his Q to kind of only affect that one minion that he really wants. And it's going to be interesting to see if this Nami can kind of is only meant to keep sustain in that lane and then, you know, help elsewhere once the game starts going toward mid game. Um, but it, that Seraphine's kind of punishing the objective right now and forcing them to stay under the turret and allowing Zaya to safely CS. I think that is a good thought in saying that, hey, Valenly is only there to just to keep Bude somewhat survived in lane, and then afterwards we'd be able to affect other champions on the map. Uh, specifically Oathkeeper, Vagar isn't the most tankiest of champions, and realistically a, a build, the build you go is going to be Frostfire into deep into Decap. If you don't go Decap second, you're losing a ton of damage uh, at that point and um, it's just uh, maybe forced if they end up falling behind maybe forced to go down the zonia's route which is not something that you really want to see uh from a vega because ultimately your goal is just to delete someone with your win button and then we did see the Orin, i guess regret his earlier choice of just going potion because he got that starting out of a Doran shield yeah um, right. that's the poke was a little bit rough and we're back in the game uh so Sweet. You're going to see the quick little store on stream right now. Uh, that is because of the pause bug. So while we're waiting for that to get through as well, that is the one thing that I was very curious about because I don't play top lane. I usually leave it on an island. I really don't care about it, whether in my games or solo queue games. Um, not seeing a first time to come through makes me think, like, why wouldn't you want to get it? Because if you're able to pick up a Ruby Crystal early to start, are you not able to just upgrade straight to a Barmy Cinder? in the top lane instead of having to potentially walk back miss minions uh but also potentially burn your tp as well as we are out of the spectator bug delay um i think it's just down to the comfortability of the top laner playing it um i've always opted more for either going completely the potion the elixir oh i'm not sure if i want to hold that big of a wave <laughs> that's a hell of a wave icg is like yeah i could one shot later man there's still the fiora here he probably thought the fiora had walked out of lane to be able to Put some vision down. This is a lot of experience that Lisa is able to pick up here as Dem Cheeks is still attempting to spread ICGEs. Um, not so much available because them be thick ones uh, as ICG now hits five as well. First Drake of the game going over towards Elysium though. 
Yeah, and it's going to be interesting to see if we're going to see a combination between um, with Orin with his QW and see if he can proc it his, the Brittle passive. Um, but so far, we've only seen him use his Q um, separately from his W. Um, but we'll see if this continues, whether it's just main, mainly he's just trying to keep that minion wave out from under his turret. Yeah, I imagine ICG doesn't really want to fight. Pick up the Bramble Vest and lane is huge because now that makes them cheeks. It makes it very difficult for him to say, hey, you know, I want to be able to fight something. ICG really needs to hit 60. It's fairly low mana, does not know. Oh, minus is here. Might be sensing a little something, but as walked up, as them cheeks attempts to walk forward, the ultimate goes down from Fiora's eye. ICG does attempt to dash away. Oh, minus with the flash and stun. A heavy commit. Not much really got out of it, though. Um, honestly, I'm, <laughs> so I'm not surprised. Uh but it looks like it is that miscommunication between the jungle and top laner. They both had different objectives of what they wanted from that gank. Um, I think Fiora is fine with her CSing at the moment since she's managed to keep the wave completely pushed into um, herself so that she can play safe now. But I, th I want to see a little bit more wave management in terms of top lane. It looks like Wobble's having a little better of a time. Um, although we just started looking at him, so maybe it's just the wave crashing and they just had reset. But it is interesting to see um, that Orn is just completely pushing into the Fiora when Fiora wants it to back off. And that when the wave wants to push, she's also pushing her way. I do want to point something out. A uh, lot of Bubble also went, as we got a bubble being thrown out there, which doesn't quite hit. Pullback does hit for after that booty though. So Hello ends up being taken kind of low. Root does miss, it, does miss for Zyra as well. For the Silas, we have seen CDR boots First, um, generally speaking, people would usually go pen boots, uh, which I believe only has, I can't remember off the top of my head as far as win rates go for boots. Uh, has like a 52% win rate. It has about the same as CDR boots. So maybe just want to be able to spam as much as you can as Valen Lear gets almost rooted by Zymphonic. Uh, just throwing this out there, I am happy seeing Zymphonic not just being relegated to Nautilus duty. Uh, it is good to be able to see other champions as the root ends up coming through. Hello, is eating a ton of damage right here though. Bubble does knock off. After the booty goes also really low. I uh, actually does come through on both sides. First blood does end up going through to Hello first though as the return is given to the booty. Honestly, it's great that both ADCs got that kill. So it's in their carries and not supports. I was thinking with the way that fight was going, it could have gone to both supports and then we would have been watching some really good warding and nothing else. <laughs> I, I do want to find one thing, like you saying that, I don't think it's so bad if it goes onto Zim um, Zimphonic because it is a Seraphine, like she does very well with gold. On the other hand, I don't really want this going over to a Nami because uh, she doesn't really offer as much as the rest of her team does. So going over to the Swain is actually really good. As you see Angry Present here coming upon the Fiora. Oh, an ultimate comes through as well. You are stuck, my friend. Spread them cheese because they just got put a pole up between them. Another kill over to Elysium. Yeah, um, although the ward was there, uh, Fiora was unable to play safely with that. Honestly, the Orin's ult was amazingly timed and mm -hmm. was able to punish. Yeah, so good lead coming through for Elysium here. They are starting to scale up, and this is not what you wanted if you're on the side of Orange Strauss because Fiora being put behind makes it very difficult for her to be able to do anything. As uh, after that, booties, this guy's got balls. He just wants some more of that ass. Like he just want he's consistently moving forward to get more poke out, particularly upon Zymphonic. He has another pull heads on to Hello as well. They'll electrocute procs doing real work for them in bot lane. But as we see, both junglers kind of looking at the top side as well. Um, not getting the kill over for Fiora, but getting the return onto the Wukong was actually huge for Elysium as Lovable is, you know, trapped in his wee little baby cage, but ends up getting out safely. Yeah, and it is interesting to start seeing that um, it does seem the Swain is using his E almost on cooldown to poke out the other team. So potentially it is an ability that will be on cooldown if Wukong ever looks at bot lane. But at the moment, it does look like Wukong is just happily ganks, uh, say ganking on this top lane. Yeah, putting the Fiora behind is actually a really, really good thing. Speaking of which, Crescent is back up here. I think Cheeks may have just seen Wukong. He thought he was just barely out of vision. So Anger Present sitting here like, hey, we could potentially make something happen here, though. But then he's ICG's doing a great job in inviting us to be able to come for a fight here. As Wukong comes back in, Repose does end up coming out for us with them cheeks. Ultimate comes down from the Fiora, but not from anyone on the side of ICG as we got another fight. Bot lane as well. Ultimate does come out from after the booty. Ends up flashing forward. Exhaust is still down. Has not been used yet, though. Root has not yet come up for Hello, but he's going to be up in just a moment here. He's going to end up dying. Zimbonic ends up getting the kill onto after the booty, which I believe was down to the Ignite. That was very close on both sides. As Lovable ends 
has found Ominous, or it might be the other side. He just took a chunk out of his arms right there. Lovable is going to attempt to fight him, but ends up thinking better. Otherwise, as Oathkeeper was making his way around, even though they didn't have much mana, Lovable knowing that, hey, I should be able to just sit back here and just continue to farm. Yeah, with um, Oathkeeper being so low on mana, it, honestly, I don't think it would have even mattered if he joined the fight. The cage wouldn't have been... Um, luckily, Lovable was able to get over the wall, but I honestly don't think they had enough kill pressure. I honestly think all the lanes are kind of going in favor. But in the end, it looks like um, the Seraphine is opting for the safer build. I was hoping to see more of a Leandries just because no one on their team kind of offers that burn that Leandries has. And especially in a lane where you have both um, Twain and Anami. So. I, I know there's a little bit of the heal cut with Grievous Wounds kind of being reduced, but I still feel like it's kind of necessary in that kind of lane, simply because they can want to sustain a little bit longer. So I was hoping for more an aggressive build from Symphonic into a Leandries instead of the... Um... <sighs> Forgot that item. <laughs> it's been so long since I played before that. It's been a <laughs> while, right? <laughs> yeah. I do want to uh, actually uh, to just throw that out there as we see Anger Fraser getting rooted up here. Drake is going to well, hold my thought for just a moment as Drake seems to be everyone's focus of attention. One thing to notice is that Dem Cheeks does not have TP, but ICGE does. And there's a ward right outside of the pit as well. So as long as ICGE is able to move back, as is having his own fight with Dem Cheeks here, Dem Cheeks ends up popping down the Fiora ultimate to be able to get the challenge through. Pull back from two people for Abude. Ends up starting up the fight between the dragon here though. But I Angry Present has a massive double knock up that goes through. After the booty does end up going down, Oathkeeper ends up flashing out as well. May not be long left for the world as Lovable is still chasing. Ends up giving the kill over to Angry Present, but you may be dead here. Nope, Monkey gets out. Monkey safe, mate. Um, Spreading them cheeks, obviously, uh, did not end up dying, but ended up back in this, but was not able to help the team. ICG doing a great job top lane. This should be a free Drake over to two Elysium. Yeah, it, it was a great fight. Um, obviously, they focused that uh, the Vigar and the Swain. I honestly think it honestly benefited them that they focused both scaling. So it honestly put them even further behind. While although the Silas did not get the kill, he did get some a little bit of gold and is increasing his CS lead um, from the 99 to 75. So it, it looks like it's all in favor of Elysium at the moment. But I mean... Orange Sprouts has a scaling game, so I mean they're still in it. They just need to buy a little bit, a lot more time than what they had originally needed. But it's going to be see, interesting to see if this changes anything in terms of since the gold is in Elysium's favor right now. Yeah, that's one thing I wanted to point out is that they do scale. They do scale very, very well. Swain is still getting off a lot of damage. But one thing, uh, kind of going to our conversation prior to that fight, is. For Zymphonic on the Seraphine, now you could just build anti-heal. I remember the name of the item, but the support item that does the anti-heal. It's like Purifier. That's the one. If you just build <laughs> that, like that's more than enough anti-heal that you would need for the rest of your team. As Lovable is really enjoying playing around with Oakkeeper right now. There's fights across all across the map right now. Pulled back coming in from Dabude. If you are Zymphonic, you got to be very careful, mate. Here. Lovable attempted to be able to come through against Oakkeeper, does not end up getting the kill with the ultimate stolen from this Vagar. Hello is just continuing to step forward. I'm actually really enjoying how this bot lane is playing out because both lanes seem to be wanting to play super aggressive with neither jungler end up showing. Both seem to be focusing around the sub side as Hello is about to step forward into the booty. Gets caught on the pull back here. Ultimate does not come out from the booty, but it does come out from the Nami. Has not root has rooted up the Nami, actually. So it's not able to continue moving forward. Zimphonica is not quite dead yet. It does end up going down to the burst from the booty as Hello has to back up now. As we see the ultimate coming top of the use against the Orn ultimate here. The Angry Person does get the second knock up here on two Dem Cheeks. But guess what? Volley Bear is here. Oh, Minus is here to make sure that Dem Cheeks do not get spread this time. Um, I want to. I, I feel like some fun. I got a little bit baited with by trying to say hello. <laughs> Honestly, I think in that situation, you both have a kill. Honestly, I, me personally, I'm, I'd be like unfortunate. My ADC got in poor positioning. I'm. I'm gonna do what I can to keep you alive, but I'm not mm -hmm. gonna put B between that Swain and the rest of the, the their team. Um, so hopefully we'll see something different. Um, we did see Symphonic go for the safer um, support item. Hopefully that provides some additional healing. Um, but I mean, with Swain going Leandries, it's, that burn's going to be also um, really detrimental to any kind of healing that will be provided by Seraphine. So uh, honestly, I think the Leandries would have been better. 
Yeah, I think I also agree with. I think the Leandres would be nice. The one problem with Leandres is it does take a little bit longer to get into. So while it doesn't do more damage, you are playing a little bit more scaling in that sense. But this allows you to just say, you know, we are able to have a little bit more power early as well. And we've noticed, right? Even though Hello steps forward, Zymphonic as a Zemphrin is able to keep Hello alive, maybe more so often than he should have. Maybe Hello should have died an extra once or twice uh, to this Swain, who is not weak at all at this point, as level will end up dodging more or less everything that Oathkeeper has to throw out, except being stuck inside the baby cage. Um, I do think that would have been a little bit better, but I do think the anti-heal uh, to Putrefire coming through, hopefully for Zymphonic, would put them in a lot better position, because think about the amount of healing that is on the side of Orange Sprouts. Fiore heals, Volibear heals, Swain and Nami as well. It would affect the entire team pretty darn heavily, as Angry Present has got a thing for them cheeks here. Like, it's just consistently up here. As the ultimate is going through, coming through again, and Spreadem just does not have the uh, ultimate, or it does have the ultimate, but not the flash. So they are really trying their best to continue to put this Fiora behind, even though she is up 20 CS. All ultimate does come through for ICG, ends up nailing. They are fully committing this and get the kill over to Angry Present, who is now 4 and 0 on this Wukong. Yeah, I want to say that the top lane jungle synergy between. Um, DZG Elysium versus the top lane jungle synergy for Orange Sprouts, it's just in favor of Elysium. It's just flat out camp. Both sides have looked at top lane ganks, and Orange Sprouts' ganks are unfortunately were not successful and were mostly to keep them off, but we're looking at two plates here. Two, two yeah, turrets. There well, should be second turret going out. Yep. That second turret going down for Elysium. They're actually going to continue pushing because they've noticed everyone from Orange Sprouts is down here at Drake. Drake is not up for another 28, 20 seconds or something, lads. You, you have to defend this turret. This is maybe not the whole turret. Going, it does go down. And Dem Cheeks is going to try and continue to chase Angry Present. Fiora can get the kill onto here, though, but ends up parrying the knockup that comes through from ICG. Angry Present is at 1 HP, but ends up giving the kill over to Spread Them Cheeks. Can continue to chase this Orn. This Orn is probably not long for the world. Doesn't have Flash, but it may be able to get over this one. <laughs> My guy got bounced backwards as level one ends up walking forward into three people here. The Zephonic ulti from Seraphine is huge coming through, but I don't think level one's going to be much left for this one. The lifesteal of this Silas is disgusting as one goes down, two goes down, four DZG, three goes down, four Elysium as Oathkeeper is like, hey, I want to help out, but ends up trapping lovable here ends up going down this dragon was i was going to say secure but with the fiora here now i don't think you can really contest this i think you have to back away yeah uh it, it looks really favorable for dz elysium until they stayed overstayed in top lane and then the fiora managed to get that kill um on both of the laners that had been pushing both jungle and top and on the other flip side it was interesting to see why that vigar was not in the fight since they technically had numbers on the bot side. Um, I guess Vigar just really wanted to make up for the early farm that he missed on, but he was able to come back and kind of take out Lovable, who had overstayed, and uh, honestly, I think they should just reset and waited for the jungler um, before trying to do that, simply because you you have a Seraphine that has a, a more... Um, has a support item. I really, really need to figure out this name of this item. <laughs> um... And you have the Zaya that has been able to put out damage, but has a Gale Force. So you're talking about two items that don't really offer that much damage. And it, and Silas had taken the brunt of the damage from the Swain. And... Alright, so it looks like I'm a solo show for a little bit. Um, but we're looking at Elysium do the dragon right now. And it does not look like Orange Sprouts is going to contest. So it does look like we're looking at a rotation from the Swain to take over mid lane. So both bot lanes are now mid lane and hopefully we'll see both soul lanes in the bot lane and top remains the same. Um, but we do want to make note that Elysium has all three drakes so far, which means that if they want to end this game early they, with their full intention, they right now benefit from that. Um, and we're going to see if this comes from anything. Uh, right now we have the Orn pushing top lane, um, and the Silas, all lanes are pushing in favor of DCG Elysium's direction, which means that it's a little bit hard to farm safely. 
um, which just allows the orange sprouts to scale a little bit more, um, provided that they can hold out uh, the remaining turrets that they do have. It does look like it's just farming for everyone. Um, I was hoping, you know, DZG Elysium would pick up on a little bit more aggression and try to capitalize on their lead. You know, whether it means tossing all the um, players into bot side and getting that Bygar and getting the remaining uh, second tier turret there and just kind of ignoring mid lane just because it's hard to push into a Swain and a Nami. That's a great route by Symphonic, but is it worth the fight? We're about to find out. Looks like it is. Um, with these EG Elysium's lead that they have had, it does look like Orange Sprouts. Oh. Yep, O minus does die from that. Um, we are looking at the lead that these EG Elysium has, and they're simply punishing across all fronts. And honestly. Orange Sprouts just needs to avoid fighting as much as possible, avoid walking into areas that they really don't need. Even if they can pick off one person, it's just not worth it if Symphonic has his Seraphine ult there. Vygar is trying his best to, to defend, but may also die here. And there goes Oathkeeper. Welcome so, back. Kind of thank you. you. Sorry. <laughs> I hope I've been missed. Um, <laughs> so I've been watching this. Sorry, I was on a, a bit of an IRL thing that just came up. Um, that was massive for Elysium. Two huge fights. They're now 14 to 5. Up 9k. Oh, just shy of 9k up here. Gold in everyone's pocket. Even ICGE is... Don't be the right. Don't be for that. Only being 25 CS down compared to them cheeks. Um, this Orn is pretty darn strong, as he just hit level 13, and we are seeing the ornaments come through as well. Items being completed across the board, so Denbudi is only on like two thirds of his second item, whereas Hello is on two and a bit on this sire as well. This game is heavily in DZG's favor right now. My thought here is that we have Dragon coming up in the next minute or so. That's really where we're going to want to see DG put their efforts as Dem Cheeks is trying to fight Lovable here, but both have really heavy amounts of sustain. But Dem Cheeks is now taking towers, so Lovable is going to fall to Dem Cheeks. This Fiora is now back in this game. Yeah, I was honestly, he, after the zone, he was safe. He just could have bailed. Um, I don't know if he saw that Orin was like, yeah, if I can land a W, I can immediately heal a portion and we can <laughs> have this fight. But honestly, Orin just needs to stay with Fiora because. Orn is the last person Fiora wants to continue hitting, so just keeping him in that lane it would just be optimal, and not letting this Vygar scale on the opposite side would be optimal for DZG Elysium, but um, we'll see how this plays out. Yeah, speaking of Oathkeeper scaling, he does. He has got the newly large rod, so that's one third of the components. I'm going to assume that this is going to be a decap, and if it is, um, that's going to be one very scary Vega once the end of getting there. But I still give another six to eight minutes before we see that as the Ornhorn comes in. ICG and Lovable are all, both on the backside here of Orange Sprouts, and they both end up just being deleted. Those were TPs that I think we both missed onto that pink ward that's where Lovable is right now. That is a free drink. That was a fantastic play from Elysium. Well done. Yeah, and that's Mountain Soul early within the 25 minute mark. And that means that right now everyone has a shield. So all that scaling that um, Orange Sprouts wants to do, I mean, they're going to be hitting Mountain Soul shield first before they can even get to the HP bars of DZG Elysium. Yeah, and this makes it even more difficult for Oathkeeper, who has just picked up that second rod now to be able to burst anyone on the side of DZ I mean, with the more Mamoris being picked up for Angry President, Kaiser has her an ultimate. Uh, Lovable is end up to just sustain through bloody near anything. 
you're really going to have struggled to be able to take it off. As Omidas ends up going to the pit, ends up losing the flipped coin over to Angry President, who ends up nailing the Baron here as well, ends up giving his life. Them cheeks is trying to spread him, but my friend, this is not where you want your cheeks to be spread, as ICGE headbutts a mountain for nothing, as it leaves him, is going to look to put it down mid lane, potentially, to end the game. Even though there is an open inhibitor top lane, lads, you've, you've lost your way, fellas. Go get it before uh, pushing this down, as... Valalia is in a bit of trouble. A lovable has found them. This Nami got served up for and played for sushi, fam. You are dinner tonight. As Elysium is most likely going to push to be able to take down this turret and inhibitor. They could actually potentially end the game here. Yeah. Um, honestly, I'm surprised with Orange Sprouts being so far behind there, continuously trying to fight Elysium. Oh, like they are still trying to make something work. Ornhorn comes out through again. Zephona pulls out the Seraphine ult, but doesn't really matter if you are after that boot because they just snatched yours up, man. Get scooped, sunshine, as we see the mid lane coming in through as well. They are just going to take both inhibitors here, though. Probably just playing it safe. They do have a fair amount of time left on this Baron buff, but I believe these is usually leaves them just thinking, you know what, let's just play this safe. We do see the Orn who got out safely there as well, as the top side of the jungle is being taken by Angry Present. Great patience on the side of Elysium. However, I do feel like they could have pushed the end of the game there. I think they could have, but they also didn't want to play. Maybe it was from earlier when they tried to push earlier um, with their jungle on top and the Fiora came back and killed them all. I think they just wanted to make sure that they could all reset their gold and kind of... Because honestly, killing the Vigar is probably the only thing that's going to stop a full dive. If they can get that Vigar, no one else really is going to be a problem because Swain wants to be in the middle of a fight. That Nami is basically sushi in the face of the damage that <laughs> DZG Elysium offers. Fiora doesn't really want to be there either, and Vali isn't really a pure tank, so there's really nothing offered by um, Orange Sprouts other than Vigar's cage to kind of CC them off the turret. So as long as Vigar is there, I think the safer decision is to leave. But if they can turn off that turret and die for that Vigar with um, Sada taking Vali Bear's ult, I think that would be optimal for uh, DZG at least yeah, while Fiora's farming top. Yeah, Fiora just trying to push top lane out as much as they can, get a little bit of that redemption gold coming out their way. But tier two for Orange Sprouts is going to go down here. This Fiora, you may have to back it to help your team because mid lane is going to have super minions stacking there very, very shortly upon the next wave coming out from the race right now. We do see the Fiora backing here. Siege is being held up by Elysium, but this was really good actually by them cheeks who's pushed out that top lane far enough to where it's going to take a while for these minions to be able to come in and impact the base. However, there is still the Baron buff open for DZG as they end up pushing to take this bot tower here first. A little bit of going in, there's solid the Swain ultimate, but this is more of a deterrent than anything. He's not actually trying to fight. It's also just buying space as both mid lane and bot lane are pushing here as well. As the level does end up going forward, doesn't end up taking much damage, pushing teams back, uh, Orange back to their Nexus here. They are taking this nice and slowly. The Swain ends up flat, uh, after really ends up ulting to move forward, but it doesn't really get much afterwards. It ends up putting IC, uh, ICGE forward, but it doesn't really get much after that. The Nami wave comes through as well as what looks like a form of engage, but it hasn't really done much. Those are two massive ultimates blown over as the Ornhorn now comes up as well. Ends up knocking up the Volleyball. Volleyball having to ult to get out. They are still moving forward, DDG Elysium, as a knockup comes through as well. The Vagar has gone down. That is the big one. Now that the Vagar is down, they should be free for Elysium to be able to take the tower. Fiora is here, though, doing a ton of damage. Repose comes through to keep your life for a little bit longer. No such thing as you are baguetting yourself out of there, my friend. That was a valiant effort put forward by Orange Sprouts, but DZG should take game one here, as long as you don't throw an IG2, there you go. <laughs> well, that was a great game one, and hopefully we'll see some stats, as long as, you know, Riot's client doesn't decide to bug us too much. teams in gold that when they're behind they're afraid to do anything but the fact that they were continuing able to move forward is something that i really really like to see as you see the damage charts come out swain after the booty was just from all the fighting that he was doing um end up getting the most damage in the game but a ton of damage coming out from hello and lovable and even angry president yeah as well. although i agreed with your assessment that it's great that they didn't just give up i think honestly with drafting the vigar and the swain they really needed to play for more time and not engage fully with dzg elysium and further their lead i mean 
getting the three turrets top lane was unfortunate. But the continued fights from the rest of the team kind of um, scuffling across the entire map was unfortunate because it was all in favor of DZG Elysium. They had all the parts that they needed and they were just benefiting off of their positioning while, you know, Orange Sprouts were kind of just there and participating, but they weren't they weren't synergizing. It just didn't seem like they were coordinating properly. I think the, the to attest that I think that was like the first gank that O minus had top lane. With them cheeks, the Fiora went into old C, I believe it was ICGE, and then O minus ended up flash stunning the Orn, but they didn't get anything out of it. Um, my thought is that coming up into game two, maybe just pick something a little bit more simpler. Like if you're going to pick the Nami, you have to pick the Lucian with it early as well. It's okay to show that, but because that's the reason you pick those, it's like picking a Senna TK. But with that, we're going to jump into a quick intermission. Don't go anywhere as we have game two of Elysium coming up against Orange Sprouts, with Elysium currently holding a 1 0 lead.
Welcome back everyone to DZG Elysium over Orange Sprout. Elysium hold the 1-0 lead after a very entertaining game one from both sides. Orange Sprout's really putting through a hell of a fight even though he ended up going down. Uh, bands are going a lot slower this time as they were in game one, which I'm happy, kind of happy about because it gives us time to actually bloody well talk about them. Ash, Yumi and Viego are the same three that have been banned from game one though. Yeah, I don't really expect much of Elysium's uh, draft to change just because of how successful they were with that first initial draft. Yeah, maybe they'll still take the Senna and the Lilia off the table here as well. Um, for those who don't know, like I was when we saw the Nami come out for Orange Sprouts, we were like, okay, maybe the Lucian coming through, but obviously it was taken away. Swain is on the hover to being banned by Orange Sprouts though, so this seems to be a contested pick on both sides. Now the question is, does DZG still ban the Senna, or do they leave that and the Talia up, which are the last two ones that were banned from game one. We want to see what really has a priority here. Uh, Talia is still good, but it isn't like b one as it was compared to last match. I think if you have it in mid, I think Lovable just destroys it just because he wants to engage, and that is the last thing any mage like Talia wants. Mm -hmm. As we see the Senna coming through, we can't be picked up by Orange Cross. No surprise here. Are going to be the best. Are going to be the best jungler in the game right now. Provides just about everything. That one small change to his dash to be able to go over walls really did make all the change in the world. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how. Um, I I feel like the Seraphine deserves to come back. I yeah. to <laughs> it was just ep it was optimal in all the fights like you i honestly have no complaints if the seraphine is picked safe first oh, i think he heard you i think some funny heard you he was like yeah you know what I'll, I'll run it back mate i would like to see the talia coming through aura for lovable as well though because being able to just get around the map that quickly uh is actually huge for dzg they seem to really enjoy playing the team fights together almost always you saw them grouped up as five and Talia would actually do really well into pairing with that. Um, can still technically be flexed though, the Seraphine. You can give it to Lovable, you can give it to Symphonic. Can technically go for Hello in the AD carry role as well here though. As we see, nothing has been picked. The Diana, oh, let me see some Yasuo coming through. But the Diana coming through, assumingly for Angry Present. Yeah, I honestly think it wouldn't have been bad to pick the ADC here since it does seem like... Um jungle is the primary so uh, if this is the jungle pick it's i feel like it's a little bit early because you don't really know if the Wuk i mean potentially the wukong could be flex still and the diana kind of has a one track of always going in uh, we're looking at a Jin and i guess a nami maybe 
Just but Jin coming through is very interesting. Um, and Jin as a, as just an eighty carry because of the durability patches, still hits like a truck. Once you get Jin to three items, still hits really really hard. So going into potentially a Seraphine, like do you have a fair bit of advantage as far as power that goes there though? I am very curious to see what they end up pulling through with it. A Tom Kench with a Jin is not something I see all the time. No, uh, at the moment we're looking at a Tom Kench that you know is going to be in that middle area while the Wukong engages. Jin wants to sit back safely and kind of autos, especially in the late game when everyone kind of on the other team kind of deletes him, especially with the Diana and the Seraphine potentially ulting him out of his ult. So we'll see where what the next pick is. Probably the ADC. Yeah, we're looking at another Zaya pick. Yeah, Zai Seraphine. I'm assuming it's going to be a Seraphine bot lane for the Symphonic there because last game it went really, really well for them. Um, if this TK does end up going in support, then it does give Seraphine a little bit more, a bit more of a chance to be more aggressive because even though Tom Kench has the ability to be able to go forward, like you can still heavily poke him out of lane though. Um, do we see the Yasuo come in for DZG or are they going to force potentially just for Wombo combo sakes? Um, orange Sprouts to ban it. As the Vagar is taken off the table, they noticed that that was something that stopped them from being able to siege as quickly in game one. But seeing that comes off the table makes me think, okay, you, you are going to want to pick something else as controlling, but it's going to allow the Diana to be able to just fly right in as the Talia comes off the table as well. wonder if the Orn is going to make it through because right now the ZG Elysium can pick it next. And obviously the, if they're gonna play through top if orange sprouts wants to play through top lane they can't have a obstacle like orn in the top lane that's actually a good point you have to take that away oh so this is a theme they've, they're picking champions that stop the side of dzg to be able to just essentially have a go button and just run forward i would imagine the orn has to be banned here no don't tell me you're actually gonna ban the also are you I, I would think the orn is a better ban here because it just enables the team more I mean, but there's there's still no guarantee that Diana is actually in the jungle. <laughs> that still can be played mid, as the coach of DZG Elysium can attest. Yeah, uh, shout out to CJ though. My guy will just play Diana at any given opportunity. Yasuo coming through as the ban here for Orange Sprouts as we uh, enter second round of picks. Um, for DZG, it has to be an AD mid lane, I would imagine. Yone is still an option as well, although it doesn't quite pair up as well as the Yasuo does. The Sejuani is... If this comes in, this is going top lane. So, <laughs> we've been playing we've been playing this all around EZG with a lot of the teams here. Um, Sejuani top, shout out to uh, Awkward Tofu. Uh, this thing is a beast. And really, a lot of teams underestimate the amount of damage that she has. But also how beefy she is. I mean, I think it works as long as potentially that's not a Fiora again, because I feel like Fiora just outduels her as long as she can, f f to a certain point. Like, I think level 1 and 2, Fiora just simply outduels her. Mord. Yeah, I agree. As we see, the Mordekaiser coming in is an interesting one, so we'll be able to fight Sajwani pretty darn easily, as well as when we get into the team fights, can pull someone out to just 1v1 them. As far as everyone that DCG has picked right now, I'd imagine Mordecai, if he's at least even, should be able to beat all of them. As Ari is picked as the last one for Oathkeeper, basically now is on a much more mobile champion to be able to get himself to reposition if needed. Yeah, what do you think is going to be that last pick that kind of solidifies everything? Silas, Silas, <laughs> Silas. Like, Silas is great here. Like you have Mordekaiser R, you have Ari R, you have Wukong R. Like it gives you a lot of agency to continue to move forward. But or ideally, I'd like to see something AD come out to be able to... No, <laughs> never mind. I caught it, bro. Give me my DZG dollars right there. So Silas being locked in for Lovable going into game two. Yeah, um, honestly, <laughs> I feel like this, this version of DZG Elysium is just very hard to pinpoint exactly what they want to do a draft up uh, very early they throw a lot of flexes in so like except for like maybe the adc role it's always kind of straightforward kind of what you expect but every other role kind of has a little bit of a flex that you can kind of be like is it really going where it's supposed to be going or is it going to go somewhere else i feel like that's like a dzg thing like we're <laughs> often saying I, I can i can attest to this playing on olympus there are times where we're like all right we pick the trundle well we could play jungle trundle we could play it tough we could play it support we can even throw it mid in the hands of scoops shout out to scoops um 
you're not getting an AD carry though. I'm like, oh, oh I want to be part of the club as well. It's a DCG thing where we end up thinking, you know, who wants to end up going where we, even to the point where we end up confusing ourselves. Um, but the side that's coming through here for Lovable is actually really good because the ultimates you can steal uh, on the side of Orange Sprouts are actually pretty big. The probably least effective one would be the Jin, but seeing Wukong, Mordekaiser, and Ariolts are actually pretty darn big for him. Yeah, as if Silas wasn't having an easy enough time with landing his E's, now he gets Ari's dash to land them. <laughs> that should yeah, be right. an interesting <laughs> um, combination. But I think, honestly, I wish Riot never had gotten rid of Adaptive Helm because it just makes... I feel like these... <laughs> these kind of cases where you have an AP heavy team, there's nothing to really stop that item anymore. And the two mythics are for tanks are literally for armor, not even magic resist anymore. I do want to throw something out there is, I know this was a thing when Silas was released, and I don't know if this is a thing, but if Silas and Mordekaiser both have ours, and Mordekaiser ulties for argument's sake to Sejuani, if Silas is around and, uh, and Ultimates to Tom Kench, let's say it's still around, does it become a 2v2 duel in the Shadow Realm? Are they if, in the same space? If they happen to be in the same area, so like if, say for example, they're both fighting in mid lane and they're within, depending on where the ults are casted, those, if the circles happen to touch, yes, they it will be a 2v2 fight. Yo, only here on DZG Gaming do you potentially see a 2v2 Yu-Gi-Oh! duel in the Shadow Realm coming up. As we see the picks coming through here, we do see the Sejuani going top, Diana going mid. Um, the one thing on DZG side I do want to throw out is they are quite heavy on the, like you mentioned, on the AP side with Seraphine, Diana, and Silas. So Tom Kench and Mordekaiser are going to have to do potentially a fair amount of job just getting as much MR as they can. Um, Jin, while obviously doesn't really go for resistances early, uh, is going to have to potentially go for Merc Treads because they still have a fair amount of CC on the side of DCG as well. So a lot of the eggs are going to be put into Hello's basket of saying, hey, you're the only source of AD. I'm assuming you're going to go uh, same thing as last game, just going with the crit route. Yeah, and I'm expecting a under five minute uh, top kind of gank from either side just because of the champs that are being played sejuani with the diana the diana with since she's melee will also be able to help sejuani proc her passive with the e combo so it's gonna be interesting to see if that's gonna be an early gank or whether wukong and mord wants to pick one at level two as well as we say that i do want to throw out like this is a much easier comp for um, for the orange sprouts to be able to pull off. We did say that after game one, like, the comp was quite difficult to play. This one's a lot easier. Wukong goes forward, Tom Kench goes forward or Num Num someone. Mordekaiser just presses R and Ari just dashes around, which is good to see because you saw that, we saw that they really enjoyed the team fighting aspect of game one. It's just their comp made it really difficult to really be able to synergize in that moving forward aspect. This I think is, this is no harm saying this, it's a much easier comp to play but will end up being a lot more beneficial for the side of Orange Sprouts. Even on the other side of DCG, still they've taken a very easy way of being able to play this out. Sejuani can start fights, Dianus can start fights, Seraphine can start fights, Silas can also just run in as well, where you have the Zaya who's able to take care of herself on the backline as well. Coming into game two though, who do you like? I, after watching the way that the they played it i honestly i feel like it's easy to release him there might be a little bit of bias just because um it, orange sprouts just always wanted to have that little scuffle everywhere but i feel like in this case if DZG Elysium happens to have a scuffle, like look at the Silas, we're looking at the Diana and Sejuani combos, the Seraphine with Zaya. I feel like it's very hard for this Jin to kind of exist in the bot lane with the poke that Seraphine's going to offer because you're always going to know when he wants to step up to auto. And unless Tom Kench plans to going in with his W, then that just leaves Jin on the backside by himself, which means Zaya can close in on the ADC instead. Um, top side, I feel like it's a little bit hard for Sejuani to have the advantage by herself. So I expect Mordekaiser to be able to push her in, which is why I'm expecting a gang from Diana early. Um, and I think Lovable is just going to fight. I think, honestly, he's going <laughs> to 50-50 everything mid. So we'll see who's the better skill on in this matchup. Obviously, he won the Vigarb matchup. Lovable's going to be like, hey, someone's showing up on my screen. I'm going to move forward at them. <laughs> We're going to jump to a quick spectator delay uh, here, folks. Don't go away. We'll be back in a few minutes for game two of DZG Elysium versus Orange Sprouts.
wish you to come over I wish that you would come and give me something to prove Won't you pull me closer I think that I'm obsessed with everything that you do Summoners Rift. Welcome back everyone to game two of the Orange Sprouts on blue side and DZG Elysium on the red side. Uh, first things foremost, no more domination tree everywhere, which is nice. No more red trees, we're getting some diversity here, which is nice. Um, as we see both sides kind of just stacking up five pointing here as well. Everything looks fairly standard. Elysium bot lane looks the same as last. Still lethal tempo going on to hello, so I assume that this is also going to be a, another crit game. After the booty, going in with the fleet footwork, which is something that you like to see. Them cheeks still going with the conqueror as again, they get the first ward over to DCG. Like, it's vision wars. I love it, but I hate it at the same time. Yeah, from... Jin, honestly, I feel like to get that extra oomph, I've always loved Dark Harvest. I can definitely understand the fleet footwork in this case, because you kind of don't want to be around when Seraphine poke as well as Zaya's poke, but I still feel like if you play with enough range, especially with Jin's auto range, I feel like you still have that capability to play with Dark Harvest and just pack a punch later in the game. It's <laughs> also... Pack a punch. Someone's playing Call of Duty. <laughs> It's also going to be interesting to see if we're going to see another version of the Seraphine where we're going to get that Moonstone Renew. Yes, yeah, so I did look it up in the meantime, so <laughs> I was not only that support item, but there just, you because, go. <laughs> just because of how beefy um, the Tom Kenj, the Mordekaiser, I feel like Leandri's is the move, but at the same time, Moonstone Renew did not hurt in the last game, so we'll see. I think it was a great way to be able to keep the team sustained, which is, I think, part of the reason why Hello survived for as long as they did, um, along with Lovable. Like, realistically, if they didn't get have that much heals, they should have died a fair amount more, if I'll be honest with you. As we see level 2 hitting first for the bot lane of Orange Sprouts, Lovable is not let go of Oathkeeper's Tell. It gets him down to about 100 HP now. Uh, Electrocute does come through from the side of Oathkeeper as well. As we said last game, uh, love just before the game started, if Lovable sees someone on their screen, it's that's the Im only invitation they need to say, Hi, I'm going to come forward. I'm going to fight you now. Top lane is not as going to be as oppressive for ICG as it was last game because... A uh, Mordekaiser doesn't hurt as much early as a Fiora does. Both are going to be fairly beefy, so I expect to see more of a wet noodle fight up there. Yeah, we're at least we're not seeing anything. Um, so one side, both junglers are starting to head toward top side. So we'll see if they're going to offer that full clear and looking for a gank elsewhere, or will they gank top? Since that stage one is pushed up, Kong might see something, but it is warded again. So we'll see. Uh, as Wukong is nearby, O-Minus did just ward the 
bush, but I don't think he's going to end up going in just yet. ICG, oh, sorry, ICG does have a ward in there, so we'll get a little bit more info ahead of time. Oh, minus does come across the ward, though. ICG got pushed into forward, and Mordekaiser's shield is kind of beefy, but not as beefy as you'd want it to be. Angry President in well does have the flash, can potentially dive in, ends up flashing forward, does not get anything as the drag back from Mordekaiser just misses there. Oathkeeper does end up charging Lovable here, though, but Lovable may win the sustain war, as we saw earlier in lane. Oathkeeper is not long for this world. Flash end up coming out from Oathkeeper as well. You might want to walk backwards because Lovable, as you've seen, is not afraid to move forward. While I don't think you should dive the Ari in the tower, seeing that she is fairly oom as well. It's probably not a good idea. TP burn top lane for them cheeks. Overall, not a lot on both sides, but DCG end up coming with the win. Summoners, as only two summoners were burned by DCG, whereas one, two, three were burned down for orange sprouts as the root comes through against Zymphonic, so they weren't ready to chase forward after the booty. I'm really curious to see how Valenlia ends up playing this because do you want to play something that's more aggressive as a TK that says, hey, the, this is a squishy bot lane, we can make something happen? Or are you just going to say, you know what, I'm just sitting here to protect my AD carry and make sure nothing happens to him? Honestly, if it was me playing it, I'd want to play it more aggressively just because that Jin W, once he gets it, he can get some a little bit more damage, especially if you can separate. Because right now, I'm just watching the support kind of cross each side, not really um, playing to a certain side or even playing the bushes well at all. So, Root coming I mean, through. Tabude is eating a wee bit more damage as you would as uh, Valen Lee ends up moving forward. Massive root coming in from Hello. Almost ends up taking the booty's life there. Um, o minus is also in the area as well. Pryo did come over for mid for Orange Sprouts first. They will be the first ones on this Drake. DCG is somewhat collapsing. They have two to two on each side. Oathkeeper is not going to really want to fight this. You don't have flash here, buddy. Or Ignites is going to most likely end up going down here to Elysium first blood. They're just depending on who's going to give the kill over to. I imagine it's going to go over to the lover pool. Still not dead yet, Sunshine. Oh, ends up having to flash forward. Misses the chains. This is huge, actually. Oathy is still buying so much more time as the rest of uh, Orange Sprouts are not converging upon the Drake. The Drake does go over to DZG. Ends up getting the first blood also over to Lovable as well. So while it bought as much time, forcing Lovable to burn the flash out there. I mean, it's it's not it's not terrible, but it's not exactly great at the same time. But good start for DZG. Yeah, before uh, we get too far into the game, uh, with that top gank that we had watched earlier, Mordekaiser kind of got baited when the Wukong failed to use his W to go over the wall. So Mordekaiser engaged fully expecting to get help sooner than he actually received help, and that was partly why that gank failed. Yeah, my, he was attempting to pull the piggy's tail of ICG, but it didn't quite work. Uh, has just hit level 6 now as well. The bot lane of DCG is back here. Bude ends up stopping the back of Zymphonic. Uh, unfortunate, but you know, it's good for them because they end up keeping Zymphonic in lane. Uh, he's going to have to back here though. Ends up really missing his back timer, so part of me even thinks, like, hey, do you even want to push? Um, but we're assuming seeing the bot lane of Orange Pass walk away. They are going to be staying here, so not too much lost on the side of DZG. Um, goal lead is still very, very small. Top lane is more or less even. Angry Present has, has been farming up a storm in that jungle as a charm misses. Lovable then takes that as an invitation to be able to go forward. This guy doesn't know when to walk backwards, does he? He's like, <laughs> ah, see, champion! Urgh! It's like when you see a squirrel online, it's like, squirrel! And he just ends up running in that direction. Angry Present finding... O minus as well, and all is normal back on the rift. Um, it was interesting to see that um, Orange Sprouts did attempt to try for that first Drake, so I think they're more comfortable with this comp than they were last comp. But I still feel like <laughs> lovable. There's a swing on both sides, mate. <laughs> They're just throwing out everything, aren't they? Uh, Lovable's like, hey, I want to chain you. Nah. Oathkeeper's was like, I want to charm you. Nah. It's like, come hit me now. They're breaking their own ankles at this rate. But honestly, Lovable's still winning that trade because if you look at their mana bars, Oathkeeper is just unable to land his abilities and make him count so that he's not getting that pullback while Thalys is choosing his engages quite um, efficiently, in my opinion. I do want to point out something as well. On the back, Silas did come back with um, a little bit more as far as itemization goes compared to Oathkeeper. Oathkeeper only coming back with that Amplifying Tome. Um, even though they are obviously even on CS, that uh, first Blood Cold coming in clutch there, which again gives, just gives Silas so much more potency in this lane. 
But hello is being chased down by man in a mask and some and an overgrown catfish. But ends up able to keep it himself safe there. Mid lane, I don't I just expect level will just continue to just be a nuisance to Oathkeeper as he was in game one. Um, we see the top laners have both decided to roam a little bit. I don't imagine we'll be seeing much up until the next Drake comes up. Symphonic slowed down from Dabude. Now, if you are Orange Sprouts, how do you want to play the next 10 minutes out? Honestly, I would try to farm as much. If I was mid lane, avoid dueling Silas. Obviously, he wants to engage every time you use your charm, so you want to play a little bit more ranged. And Mordekaiser, I feel like, can abuse the wave management a little bit more because she just simply wants to step in to farm, but if you can force her off and keep the wave on your side, there's simply nothing Ooh. that can offer. Charm hits, just out of tower range though. Uh, the charm hits, but is it really worth it? Oathkeeper already low on mana and literally is unable to clear that next wave that's about to hit the turret, so in the end I think he loses out. As you see top lane, ICGE is uh, having a little bit of fun. We have one death run brought over by the Mordekaiser. ICGE may not be long for this world. Angry Peasant is here as well. The divers are quite well good. The piggy gets out alive as Diana ends up coming here as well. Oh, Minus is about to die here too. Angry Peasant. Lovable has also decided to join and say, I would like a part of this party as well. There are champions on my screen. I wish to devour. That was really well played. Crops to ICGE for staying alive for as long as possible, buying so much time for Angry Peasant and Lovable to go out there. Really taking that swing going, uh, putting two more kills over into DCG's pocket. Yeah, you just have to love this durability patch. It's definitely made a difference between life or death for a certain champions across the board. Um, it is interesting to see that the Sejuani was able to kind of get that kill, and then the Silas, he got another kill, which means his Dark Seal is now four after mm. he'd flashed for the last kill, so we might actually see a very, uh, Silas with a, quite a punch early. You, you, you know, we ever wish you used to see like you know players that have the um, the the what's it called the Adobe eye tracking system that lets you see like where they're looking. I'd love to see where Loverball is looking because I swear every time there's a champion in this field of view, as top lane ends up being a little bit more of a noodle fight. I don't think this is really gonna amount to much as Cheeks is still trying to pull from O4 but ends up getting stun locked. Loverball is like, oh my god, Oathkeeper on screen must move forward. He was losing more HP than he was to, than Oathkeeper was and still decided to move forward. This guy, I love the aggression as you see the, the first Drake being going down, second Drake in this game, but first Drake going forward to Sprouts. Lovable is now probably being told, all right, back it up, sunshine. Like, we can't keep doing this all the time. <laughs> well, it was a nice roam um, by Symphonic. I feel like it, since uh, the ADC had backed, his roam was great timing. I don't really know what Jin offered because no one had landed any ability. So that means that his stun was not going to, his route was never going to happen. Um, but, I mean, it's each their own. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I'd expect to see that this noodle fight is never going to end. Angry Presence coming in to have some fun though. ICG moving forward. Stump ends up coming through now. Spread MG's just got the ultimate offense up using it on to the piggy, but it's not quite going to work. Spread MG's has got a full shield built up, but Angry Presence is still just sitting here. Ends up getting burning the flash out of Spread them Cheeks. Flash gone for Angry Presence as well. I don't think this Mordekai has left much for the world because the stun's about to come in from ICG and ends up putting another kill over to DCG. More Unfortunately, it's gone into this Diana's pockets, and she is going to be able to one-tap more or less. If she gets a hold of Jin, this Jin is not long for the world. Another kill over to DZG. Yeah, honestly, I think Mordekaiser would have had a better chance against the Diana, and honestly, just ulting her instead of the Sejuani, just because Sejuani, with her abilities, can land that stun and just literally... Once her passive procs, and she be able to just stand there and let more just stand... Um, rooted while she just walks away while diana only can engage so i honestly think that was just a poor choice by mordekaiser to ult the sejuani even though uh she was the lower of the two oh it's like a lovable's fighting again now exactly for the first time this game has been moving backwards well done sunshine you know your limits <laughs> as he ends up getting out safely from the gank from O minus as after the booty ends up moving forward. Hello ends up getting rooted. The root has forcing the the booty to be able to flash out to avoid a potential seraph. You know, if that if that landed, I don't think that Jin was going to be uh, long for this world. But really good reactions on being able to flash that uh, that root there. 
Honestly, I think they could have done it while Jin was closer to the turret instead of using the um, root. Oh, here we go again. I see. I've seen this episode, mate. I'm on season three right now. Them cheeks are being spreaded right there. Another kill goes over to Angry Present. My, they're just farming the Mordekaiser here at this point. Um, not great for Orange Sprouts. You would think that Orange Sprouts wants to say, you know what, just sit under your tower, learn to just sit back and say, hey, hey you know what, you are far behind as Loverball is now continuing to move forward. Well, things have resumed normal process here. Uh, it may actually want to end up diving the Oathkeeper though, but Oathkeeper getting a great flash in, one more auto and would have ended up dying. But everything really just going into favor of these EGs. Loverball could, has a flash of his own, but if you really wanted to commit to this, probably would kill Oathkeeper as long as that charm is not there or is expended. Honestly, I think if I, it just seems like a pure draft difference at the moment because this Mordekaiser has been pushed up continuously and still cannot win a 1v1. I think if if the top plays it, an Alawi would have been a better choice. But right now, they're just trying to fight this Sejuani instead of trying to just freeze her out of gold. I think that... I, I agree with that, but my my thought with Mordekaiser going top is... You have to wait until you have an item. At no point do I really think you beat the Sejuani, because Sejuani just inherently is just such a beefy champion. Mordekaiser needs levels, needs items to then be able to say, you know what, now I'd be able to take you. The Monarch Embrace usually is one that you do see fairly often on the Mordekaisers. That would then do a hefty amount of damage to Little Miss Piggy up here. But before then, and not even having your Rift Maker, it just makes it really difficult for you to do anything, as after Bude is just stepping up to his Inferno, probably they didn't care about stopping his back, but in front of the other, really want to take a chance. It is a 5k goal lead for DZG. Uh, if I'm the side of DZG, just keep doing what you're doing. Keep sending Angry Present top lane to be able to put more damage on to spread them cheeks as Angry Present has shown it, decided to show mid lane this time and say, you know what, I'm going to try and make sure I show some love to our lovable mid laner as well as Angry Present was going in on to the RE. Ends up getting landing the charm though. Ultimate coming out of, from O minus. They, so, they don't, sorry, that was Lovable who stole O minus. No, did not steal. It was O minus who ended up getting the LT out. So two ulties burn for the side of O minus. Oh, for Orange Sprouts level ends up going forward. Is this going to be the 19th time of the charm of being able to get the kill? Not quite. You you really know that they're like, we really want to step forward. Ends up burning the flash. He says, the hell with it. This kill's mine now. <laughs> uh, we did see that uh, Diana used her ult, unfortunately, to no help. And that Mordekaiser decided to take a whole scenic route to that fight. You see a dragon fight coming out here, though. Spread them cheeks is around orange pals do have prior ones angry president is across the wall though they do have some vision because this piggy is a chonky one so what a completely gold post of ultimates but the smite comes over for angry president and getting the kill there one more goes down as oh minus ends up dropping spread them cheeks is not gonna be enough for this world as tanky as this mordekaiser may be you are 1v1 versus a chonky ass piggy and prepare for a book chop as lovable ends up getting the kill there i I'm honestly surprised that he's this obsessed with ulting the um, Sejuani at this point. It hasn't succeeded the last three times. What makes it work this time? His first tower hit, most likely going down for DZG. Second. Level is, well, second tower, sorry, goes end up going down. Uh, first tower, you're right, was taken top lane. ICG ended up getting in the top lane because of uh, Harold going up there and helping out. Zymphonic, I'm going to save you a little bit about so My guy swung for the gold and completely with goalposts right there. Um, probably was all in ideal. He would say it's a 200 IQ play because he split the team up. But DZG ends up coming out with the with the uh, ahead there with the Drake second second Drake for them going down. Now Lovable is five and zero on this Silas, and Angry Present is three o four on this Diana. This team is scary. Like if you're anyone on the side of Orange Sprouts, you don't want to be anywhere in these uh, these two when they end up showing up on your screen. Yeah, but if you're coming from Aegis and you're looking at DZG Elysium and you want to kind of scout them as an opponent, you can kind of see this is exactly where their strengths are. Top lane is an island. When he gets ganks, he can honestly succeed as a weak side. Mid lane wants to fight you. Bot lane doesn't want to fight you. So, I mean, if you kind of get adjusted to that kind of comp, I feel like there's a lot of comps that can, if you play maybe strong bot side versus... And then maybe weak side mid and 
you know, could be either way top lane since, you know, top lane is going to be weak side anyway. So mm -hmm. I feel like if you can play to those strengths, I feel like you can have an opportunity to kind of play against this team. But I think if you're going to put your all your balls in the basket for top lane from Orange Sprouts' side, I feel like you're... It, you're going to expect a safe play if that's ICG is able to walk out from most of the fights when he was Orn. He's doing the same thing on Sichuani. Um, these ganks have been ineffective, so maybe it's just the synergy between top and jungle, and you know that's make, making a difference between the plays. But then you're looking at mid lane where all these duels are happening that really should not be happening. And saying that, they are putting their attention into Shelly now. This will be the second. Rift of the game going down over to DZG. My thought is that either, I mean, mid lane's already been cracked, top lane has already been cracked. I would just throw this bot and whatever lane lovable is in, just try and get the Silas even further ahead because there doesn't seem to be anyone on the side of Orange Sprouts that can really. 1v1, no one can do it. Just straight up. I don't think anyone comes close. 2v1, maybe, depending on the champions that are down there. Um, Lovable is just so far ahead and probably has a fair amount of gold in his pocket as well uh, to be able to back and pick up a full second item. Lovable and Angry Present are moving on. They did see after that booty down, he has a tower to stand under, but it's just a lot more vision control coming out for Orange Sprouts in preparation for the next trick, which should be up in 90 odd seconds here. Lovable ends up stealing. <laughs> Pardon me, the boot base. Ult, uh, sorry, after the Bude's ultimate. Ends up getting landing one, landing two. Final shot coming out, ends up landing there as well. This tower is going down. Even more po power uh, gold in their pockets. It is a perfect game so far. Actually, never mind. It's not a perfect game. They didn't get all dragons. Uh, uh, sorry, Elysium not doing as good as we wanted them to do. You guys missed the Drake. You guys aren't doing very well now. <laughs> Um, well, it looks like we're gonna see another fight soon around the jungle, and I feel like it around this dragon, and I think that's gonna kind of set the tone of exactly how this game will continue, because if if they give up another Drake, yes, they still are not on that, so they don't have Infernal Soul yet, but it's just, it's starting to heavily weigh in favor of DG Elysium, and it's gonna be hard to come back from a team that has two Infernals when you're already losing the top side. Um, jungle hasn't been able to make any successful ganks, and this Ari, with all her mobility, is still being chunked by the Silas. Yeah, as we see ICG, I feel like I've seen this episode so many times. Stun's coming out, yep. It's about them Chiefs trying to chase him, doesn't quite work. Piggy walks away, flailing his curly little tail. The dying, uh, Angry President was up there and it said, you know what, we don't even need to do this. We want to get preparation down for Drake, which is up in less than 15 seconds now. Um, we see DZG here is already prepping up some vision. It does look like Orange Frost may want to contest this, so they may be thinking going against what you thought of saying, you know what, maybe we can make something happen here, though. Both top laners have TP and they have built a little bit of distance. Um, both can stop each other's top uh, TPs coming in as well, depending on uh, if Mordekaiser has the drag up as well as the ultimate. Same thing with Sejuani with the Q as well as the ultimate as well. These will probably just be fighting until both teams call for a TP. Um, I don't think they will try to stop each other's because if they do, then the other would stop theirs as well. Um, I think this is good for Morin Sprouts. Back up, you can't really fight right now because knowing of how far behind you currently are, second tower ends up going down for the EGG as well as Drake here. Um, DCG is now on soul point. Now, if you're the side of Orange Sprouts, you're going to say to yourself, we have a few minutes left now to just farm up. Just get as much gold into our carry's pockets as we can, because you're going to have to fight the next Drake. And then, as we see, DCG slowly moving up top side. Just clearing out a lot of vision up there. Baron is up. I don't expect them to start it. Uh, if they did, then I'd be a wee bit concerned because you'll be coin flipping a Baron that O minus is probably still going to be able to get into the Drake pit fairly easily here. If I'm the side of DZG, I'm just thinking, you know what, we've got a great lead so far, let's just continue to do what we do. We should finish, we should have the final thing, our final win con active in the next four minutes when the next Drake comes up. Zonia's is completed for lovable as well, as well as Angry President going 10 stacks on the mesh eyes makes this diana potentially even more explosive the stopwatch there as well yeah <laughs> as this game continues it's going to be interesting to see if dzg elysium can um, 
go deathless this game, or who is going to be reported for griefing their team? <laughs> I think um, if there is one, my thought would be, okay, Lovable will probably be the only person I can think who may die, because my guy has just been... My guy knows one speed, and that is go. He just moves forward. As uh, Horin Sprouts, do you see a couple members of Elysium walking past the Baron Pit as they see them mid lane? Yeah, I imagine this is going to be a bit of a low period. And we won't get much of a fight or much of entanglements coming through. Jin coming through with the rapid fire cannon. Um, as much as I don't like RFC, it probably is the best thing here because it does get him a little bit more range. You don't want to be near level, but you especially don't want to be near angry present. Uh, speaking of which, we end up finding them cheeks again. They have caught them cheeks out so many times. The ultimate has been used. Shield comes through. There are four people here. Ends up ulting the Diana, but it doesn't quite matter because the kill finally goes over to ICGE. Diana's like, hey, you can have this one. I've been there enough. You've got enough gold. It's your turn. As they turn their attention to the Baron here. And we were... <laughs> Production was kind enough to provide a um, poll for us on who we think the, which of these five members is going to die potentially first. Um, right now, we have one vote each for their for our bot lane. <laughs> you, you know what? I'm I'm gonna jump in on this. I'm putting my my bucks on um, lovable here. So, oh, someone went for ICGE. Who are you? Speak up, young one. As Tangry present ends up moving here, has found O minus and the booty. Ultimate comes through my CGE here. It is going to end up taking down O minus. The booty is. You are in a lot of trouble, my friend. No rapid fire cannon can save you there. Two more kills going over. Both going over to Lola, uh, to Lovable. Um, I may have. I may want to switch my vote because I don't think after that Lovable is really going to be the one dying here. Still has Zonia's ten stacks on the Dark Seal. DZG also have Baron. They could actually, with 22 seconds left for the booty, could potentially look to end the game here through mid. Yeah, and this Kaiser, I think he's done with this game. He is pushing top lane. <laughs> Yeah, um, trying to get. I know he's fairly behind on gold, but trying to get what you can. The inhibitor tower does end up going down here, though. Mordekaiser is walking backwards to potentially join their team or just to clear out topside camps as well, just to get whatever gold that they can. As the charm lands on ICGE, that did nothing, mate. That's a very beefy piggy right there. Uh, that pork has been massaged. That's some real thick bacon that you're going to have to cut through there to be able to kill as they see the rest of DCG backing up. The Bude being a bit of a nuisance stuff. Yeah, and the Ward uh, tried to walk through the, the his jungle, but the other DZG Elysium was aware. They did have a Ward in the area, and they kind of mm -hmm. were watching. So I think that's the main reason why they pulled back right before the Dragon. So it's going to be interesting to see. I think every Dragon, I want to say, except for the first one, um, Orange Sprouts was just late to. Like, they're going there just as it's spawning. They're unable to put wards into the opposing jungle. So they just have no TP plays on the on the other side that um, Orange Sprouts can play around. And we're just watching them flat out be pushed out of their own jungle. Yeah, this, this is the, literally the definition of winning with your wallet. Where no matter who shows up on the side of these, you like, Zymphonic could probably... Probably not 1v1, most of them, but probably can still make something happen. Lovable ends up going forward onto the Ari here. Okay, there's probably not going to be much for this world. There's enough someone to escape. Angry Present has found the uh, bot lane of Orange Sprouts here as well. We are 11 0 over to DCG. ICGE still just matching uh, the Mordekaiser here top lane. At this point, like it doesn't it doesn't really do anything to this Sejuani until he ends up getting that demonic embrace. Like Mordek It'll be very more difficult for Mordekaiser to do anything. Orange Sprouts are going to say, you know, we can't even contest this. Like, this, this Drake has to just be given over. Infernal now in Elysium's hands. ICGE is just keeping them cheeks at bay. He could probably solo Mordekaiser at this point. Funny enough, Sejuani actually does do a fair amount of just stock damage there. It's fairly stat heavy for a tank. As DGG ends up going mid lane to take the inhibitor here, the ultimate has been stolen. Great ultimate going in from Angry Present, going in too locked up there. The fish and the fox are down. Monkey still alive as the man with the mask is going to have a knockoff as well. That kill ends up going to Angry Present. Then inhibitor tower, the Nexus tower, sorry, are all under attack as them cheeks is here. Massive action ultimate coming in from O minus. I was actually really good in ultimate. Knocks up everyone on the team of DZG, but ends up going down to Angry Present. The last man, them cheeks, ends up being taken down as well. That is a clean sweep for DZG, and we all lost our bets because no one on the bloody team died. 
<laughs> well, from the side of any fans of EZG Elysium, that is a good thing. This was a very clean game, um, and it was a clean series. Yep. <clears throat> Solid 2-0 for DZG in AGL right now. They are in their third week, so things have been looking good. Every week has been, you know, a general good improvement for the side of DZG. Uh, commiserations over to Orange Sprouts. I will say this again. One thing that they did very well in Game 1, not so much in Game 2, was they will always say, hey, we can try, we can contest something, we can try and move forward to make things happen. Um, hello, you, um, I need to say hello to you. My guy did no damage. Just five and a half Gs. You did nothing, brother. That game was full. Low. You know when you're told how to be carried to a game? It's a skill. You have to understand when to get in someone's pocket. The bot lane of DZG knew like, hey, mid jungle and top are really strong here. We're going to jump in their pockets and they're going to carry us to victory here. Yeah, and we're look we looked at a great series. And who do you think is the MVP in this in this series? I would love to say Angry Present uh, on both the Wukong and the Diana was really just a massive enabler for DGG. Allow it got lovable ahead, stabilized uh, ICGE in game two, uh, but also putting down the Fiora in game one as well, um, but also being a bit of a nuisance bot lane. So my vote would have to go to Angry Present. <laughs> I think that's a great choice. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for tuning in this week, everyone. Before we take off, I am a little low on energy. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to grab me some Dubby. And if you don't know what that is, Dubby is an energy drink that is similar to things that you may already use. It contains vitamins, amino acids, and 150 milligrams of caffeine from the seeds of coffee plants. It contains no sugar and no crap or artificial colors in there and is gluten-free. Be you By using the code DCG, when you get 10% off your entire purchase, including a starter pack, that uh, that has a shaker and three sample favors the link will be in the twitch chat well thank you very much for joining us tonight my name is morpheus i've been joined as ever by the lovely Sada elements have a lovely weekend be safe and take care of each other